Good evening, and welcome to the world service of the BCC, Body Centered Cubic. Hello. In this video, we are going to model the body centered cubic structure, particularly its 100 face, commonly called shorthand BCC100. Now, if we start with a standard simple cubic cell, we can understand its relationship to the body centered cubic cell. So here again, remember that we have our points um, all separated by an interatomic distance edge length A. Um, so we get a four sided quadrilateral, uh, all with the same size, so it's a rhombus. Each of the angles, it's not noted here, are right angles. So that means that this top face here is a perfect square, and all the angles inside are going to be 90 degrees. This is our simple cubic structure. Now, if we simply modify it by adding one more atom exactly in the center of the cell, so we imagine the cell to have a center, and we put another atom at this particular point, we now have the body-centered cubic cell. So we see, um, seems only slightly different, but now we have one additional atom. An important feature is if we look at the 100 face, that is the top face of the crystal. So this top face here has no additional atoms to it. So at least superficially for the externally exposed 100 layer, we are going to still have a square structure. So it's gonna look remarkably similar in the 100 face to the simple cubic 100 phase. Here we have a top view of this top phase, which is the 100 plane for the body centered cubic. And we notice at least superficially that we have a square just like the simple cubic 100. Uh, and um, we just have these four particular uh, atoms in a square arrangement. But now if we look by comparison to our more extended structure on the left-hand side, we see that it's true that there are no additional atoms on this top face, but we do have an atom that's exactly in the center here that is below the top plane by a distance of one half A. So I will denote this as an open circle. So now we see that a difference of the body center cubic structure the central atom is shown as an open circle here. That is this particular atom. Now keep in mind that this atom and this atom in the body centered cubic structure will be identical and essentially indistinguishable from each other. So they'll both be of exactly the same element, but I've shown this one here as a circle just to show that it's uh, kind of a fake three dimensional representation because on the same layer as the whiteboard, are the four atoms at the corners, but this particular atom here is extended into below the board by a distance of one half A. And this is a point of comparison again with the simple cubic structure. If we were looking at simple cubic, behind this particular atom at a distance of A, 2A, 3A, and so on, further down into the board, we'd have additional atoms. And similarly here. Now with the body, uh, if a simple cubic in this region inside the square, no matter how far we would go into the crystal, there would be no atoms at all there if we have simple cubic. But since we have the body center cubic, there will be an atom of this type. It'll be at a distance of one half A for the first one. And then each additional body centered atom will be at a distance of another A. So we'll have one half A, three halves A, five halves A into the whiteboard to get to the positions of this particular atom, which we know is chemically identical and indistinguishable from this one. But we've just shown it as a circle to remind us um, of the difference between the body center cubic structure and the simple cubic, particularly when we're looking at the 100 faces. There is another shape that is closely related to the body centered cubic shape. And this is called the cesium chloride structure. Superficially, it resembles the body centered cubic in that just like simple cubic, at each of the vertices of the cube, so each distance is still going to be A and all the angles are going to be 90 degrees, 
at, we have one particular type of atom. So let's say that's cesium in the case of cesium chloride. Now we know if we had a body-centered cubic structure of that type, we would have the same type of atom here, but it would be located at the body center of the unit cell, and that would make it the body center cubic. But in cesium chloride, this particular atom is chemically distinguished from the vertices. So now we put it as a different color in the center. And now we still remind us that this is actually a distance of one half A below the surface. So let me even make this as an open circle just to remind us of its depth here. But I've drawn it as a different color to remind us that in the cesium chloride structure, the atom at the center is a different element than the atoms at the corners. These are all one element and the one at the body are a different element. So while it's distinct from the body-centered cubic structure, we can still use it and understand it as by analogy with BCC. Here we have just the outermost 100 surface for the body-centered cubic structure. One of the most important BCC structures is for iron, and iron is one of our most important catalyst metals. Here we have the structure with the paper figure overlay showing the dimensions. For example, up here, it reminds us that the edge length really is A, and then that the diagonal length is going to be the square root of 2 times A. For each cell, we notice that in the center, we have a circle that's not open. It's actually with a closed color. This reminds us that this isn't exactly um, at the exposed edge of the surface but it's actually either going to be a different type of atom in some cases, or it's going to be an atom that is below the surface level. So for the case of body-centered cubic, we're using the shaded notation to show that there is an atom of exactly the same type as this one, but it's not going to be at the same level as the open circles that we have. And here we show the adsorption of several carbon monoxide molecules onto the body-centered cubic 100 surface with the paper figure. And here we have the adsorbed carbon monoxide molecules on the same surface, but now with the paper figure removed. We can even develop slightly more realistic representations of the 3D surface uh, of body centered cubic 100, let's concentrate on just these four unit cells here. First, we remove the paper figure, then we double the height for each of the atoms in the lattice. So we just put a second one by one rectangular brick that we pre painted using metallic gold, which is not necessary, but just to a little bit of visual effect and also having some of the lego pieces that are white is very convenient because if you need to add additional colors later on it's very easy to paint over the white lego pieces so there we have each of the atoms in the lattice is now two bricks tall and we can just remind ourselves that it still has the same structure as before. We can overlay the paper figure. And this one we had before. There we go. Again, which reminds us of the dimensions. So as a first step, that helps a little bit, but merely it just makes the atoms of the lattice stand out from the base a little bit better. But we haven't doesn't seem that we've done anything distinctive with regards to the body-centered cubic structure yet. Now we can actually add in the body-centered atom. So we put this actually in the center of each of the unit cells, but it is only one brick high rather than being two bricks high. So in that sense, the dimensions are perfectly correct.
So what is nice about this is it gives us a better representation, a more th better 3D effect between, for example, absorption over here, where we can have, I don't get the light. So we have, for example, the absorption of a carbon monoxide atom on the on top site, it's very easy to see. But now we can see that when it comes and binds in the hollow, as a difference from these simple cubic cases, now there actually is an atom directly below the adsorbate molecule in the hollow. So that's a difference of the body-centered cubic uh, structure from the simple cubic structure. Because if we did this as simple cubic, for simple cubic, the analogous structure would be simply to remove all of those in the center. So this would give us an, a more accurate 3D representation of the simple cubic 100, particularly if we want to distinguish it from the body-centered cubic 100, where we would need this body-centered atom of exactly the same type as at the vertices, so that's a useful reminder that the color code is accurate in this case. And then we can just show one more time our paper figure over top just to kind of remind us of what's going on here. A disadvantage of the paper is that we can't see through uh, the figure to see what's below it. So if you use something like tracing paper or a very, very thin see-through paper, you would get that additional 3D benefit. So I might try that for one of the next videos. Once we've gotten to this level of detail, it is not difficult to simply uh, adapt what we've done so far to model a closely related structure, the cesium chloride structure. So to convert this to the so-called cesium chloride structure, we need to replace the body-centered atom in each case by an atom in the same position, but of a different element. So I have some old style, darker blue, one by one bricks. So I'll put them in there because the color coding is important here to show that this is another atom in the lattice that's of a different element than the neighbors. So if we do it this way, not only do we have the cesium chloride 100 structure accurately modeled as far as the identities of the relevant atoms in the lattice, we also have a much better appreciation for the uh, subtle 3D dimensions when we're looking at the 2D100 surface of cesium chloride. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.